Welcome to Electra Online. When you take a typical statistics course, you will always use the table to calculate or to figure out the standard score Z, the numbers standard deviations away from the mean. But for some of you that have seen calculus before, and some of you that may just be really interested in how the table was put together, here is a video that shows you how that was done. Now, it'll be somewhat complicated, and it's definitely beyond the level of what this course should be, but maybe just out of pure interest, it's interesting to take a look at this. So again, let's say we have a normal distribution, we have a mean, and we have some point away from the mean, let's say one sigma away from the mean, and we want to calculate the area underneath the curve, and of course, if you go to look that up on the z-table, one sigma will give you 0.34134, which is 34.134%. That represents the area underneath the curve for this region. But how did they get that number? Where did that come from? Well, this is how it's done. So first of all, the area underneath the curve is defined by this equation right here. So that's the equation. It's 1 over the square root of 2 pi times 1 over sigma times the integral from 0 to z sigma, remember z is the number of sigmas away from the mean, so in this case we're going to use an example where z is equal to 1, and it's the integral of e to the minus x squared over 2 sigma squared dx. So it's simply integrating underneath this curve, and this curve is defined by that particular equation. Now it turns out that the integral from 0 to b, b being any number, of e to the minus ax squared can be defined as 1 over half, or 1 half, times the square root of pi over a, times the error function of b times the square root of a. Now in this case, b is going to be 1 sigma, because that's the limit. The limit is going to be from 0 to 1 sigma, and a is 1 over 2 sigma squared, because if you replace 1 over 2 sigma squared by a, you get this relationship right here. So now we have a relationship for a and b in this general equation. So we know that the integral of this equals that. Now what is the error function of some number? Well here, the error function of some number, let's call it x, x in this case is b times the square root of a, is equal to 2 over the square root of pi times this infinite sum. The first term is x, the next term is minus x cubed over 3. The next term is plus 1 over 2 factorial times x to the 5th over 5. Then minus 1 over 3 factorial x to the 7 over 7. Plus 1 over 4 factorial x to the 9 over 9. And on and on like that to infinity. An infinite number of terms. Of course, we don't have to do an infinite number of terms. We can do just a certain number of terms to get a close enough value. So now we need to apply this. So first of all, area equals 1 over the square root of 2 pi times 1 over sigma times the integral of e to the minus ax squared. So we wrote it in this format so we, we can replace this portion right here by what that's equal to. So this portion becomes this right here, which is defined right there. Okay, now we have to do a little algebra. Yes. Hmm? Oh yes, I'm missing a dx. Thank you. All right, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, I was missing my dx. Um, now, we do a little algebra. So when we simplify this, notice we have... Um, oh, we can't simplify yet. We first have to substitute for a. a is 1 over 2 sigma squared. So that gives us uh, the square root of this in the numerator because it's 1 over that number, 1 over 2 sigma squared. That puts 2 sigma squared in the numerator. It's still a need to radical. And then b becomes 1 sigma. And a again becomes the square root of a becomes 1 over 2 sigma squared. And of course, that's on the need to radical. So we first replaced a and b for their proper values right there. Then we do a little, little uh, simplification. We have the square root of 2 pi here and the square root of 2 pi there. So that cancels out. So let me get another color. So we can see how we simplify that. So this simplifies with this. And sigma squared underneath the radical simply becomes sigma. And we have a sigma in the denominator. So this cancels with this. And we're simply left with one half up here. Now we have the error function of 
Notice that this sigma squared in the radical and this sigma cancels out and we're left with the square root of 1 over 2 or simply 1 over the square root of 2. It's the same thing. So now we have to evaluate this and of course 1 over the square root of 2 is approximately 0 0.707. And then if we then apply this to our general expression of our error function, in this case remember that x is now represented by 1 over the square root of 2 which is approximately 0 0.707. So we make that substitution for x and so remember we still have the 1 half in front right here, 1 half times the error function, so 1 half times the error function which includes this term right here, 2 over the square root of 2, uh, 2 over the square root of pi I should say, times x which is now 0.707 or essentially 1 over the square root of 2 minus 0.707 cubed over 3 plus 1 over 2 factorial which is 1 half times 0.707 to the fifth over 5 minus 1 over 3 factorial which is 1 sixth times 0.707 to the seventh over 7 plus 1 over 4 factorial which is 1 over 24 times 0.707 to the 9 over 9 and so forth. So let's cut it off let's say right about here. We'll do the first four terms. Remember that we already know that this area should be about 34.134%. Let's see how close we get and I am going to use this instead of that so we don't get a round off error. Alright, so what does that look like? So 1 divided by the square root of 2 and we take the square root of that equals and then minus 1 divided by the square root of 2, we raise that to the third power and divide by 3. Okay, now we go plus 1 divided by the square root of 2 to the fifth power divided by 10. And now we subtract that term, which is minus, we have. 1 over the square root of 2 to the 7th power divided by 42. And then, after multiply that times, well here again we can simplify that some more, the 2's cancel out, and I have to multiply that as 1 over the square root of pi. So essentially, divide that number, divide by the square root of pi. equals. And this is what I get. I get 0 0.34124 and that ends up being 34.124%. And notice by only taking the first four terms I get the exact same result as I get in the table. So what we could do instead of using the table we could actually calculate the z-score, the standard score, using this general equation anytime we want. Now, of course using the table is a whole lot faster and easier and it does exactly the same thing. Essentially every number in the table was calculated using this exact method. They probably used a computer of course to do that, not by hand because it would take a very long time to do it by hand, but this is indeed how it's done if you didn't have the table. Quite, quite a mess, but it works actually beautifully. Just think. You go to the exact equation that represents the curve, you integrate to get the area, you replace the error function by what the error function is defined as, you plug in the correct numbers, and voila, the number from the table pops right up, the exact same number. Ooh, wait a minute. One, two, four. Ooh, it's not exactly the same, is it? It's one, three, four over there, and one, two, four over there. I was close, not quite exactly the same. So maybe I needed to go one more term to get even closer than that. Oh well, close enough.